Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. And this is our weekly update blog, number 31, for covering our progress and accomplishments for the week of 9-23, September 23rd, 2013. The purpose of our organization is to function as a highest good for all organization, creating a blueprint for a better world for everybody. We believe that a world that works for everyone is possible. We believe that technology exists right now to create a world that works for everybody, where everybody has food, housing, shelter, and uh, their basic needs met, as well as education. And we're also creating uh, for-profit and non-profit, highest good of all business models, and open sourcing everything necessary to create sustainable and self-sufficient and self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built all over the world. And so the long-term goal is creating a world that works for everybody, and the building of a blueprint is our process to achieve that. It starts with one, and so that's what one community is all about. So this is update number 31. I will jump right into it. We have a ton of stuff that was accomplished in this last week, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the bullet point list of everything that we accomplished, and then as is the format of these videos, I'll then loop back around and go through point by point everything that's being, uh, happening behind the scenes. And uh, if you want to read about this stuff, there's a written blog that goes along with this. We put that written blog link in our YouTube video description. Or, of course, if you want to see what's going on right now, you can just go to the blog itself, which is onecommunityglobal.org forward slash one dash community dash blog. And you can see uh, weekly reports of everything that we're doing. You scroll through for weeks and weeks and weeks on everything that we've accomplished. So without further ado, let me jump into our action item list. Uh, here's the bullet point list. And I'll go into details. And uh, like I said, you can go to the link if you want to uh, click on the information and see this stuff, the images and all the other details on the website, infinite amounts of details. It's amazing the amount of information our website contains. So this last week in food infrastructure, a big part of the blueprint for a better world that we see is sustainable food. Now, being able to feed the world, we believe this is completely possible. We believe we can do it without uh, pesticides and herbicides and poisons and things like that. And so uh, this last week we completed the Wallapini 3 plant details are all up on the website. Um, just other than a few touch-up details that need to go on there still, but we've got all those up. Uh, we got our plant cost analysis done for all six of the Wallapini and Aquapini structures is now up on the website. And we also created new directories on the website so that when you go to the overview, you can click to the different sections of the different structures and see you know, the overstory or the understory, the ground plantings, the slope plantings, or the deep water culture, or the media bed details. Um, we've got a new rendering from Doug, which shows what the whole food infrastructure will look like if you're looking north. And we've got the uh, food forest page, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash food forest page. It's all alphabetized and reformatted to make it a little bit easier to navigate. And um, we're working on all of those plants now getting all those details with pictures and planting guidelines and cultural considerations and then where you will purchase all those plants like we just put up for all the different Aquapini and Wallapini structures and so that's what's happening food for it and uh, food infrastructure. So in housing, uh, sustainable housing, so of course blueprint sustainable housing, there are uh, millions and millions of people without homes on this planet right now and lots of housing methods that are being uh, deployed or employed that are not sustainable. Um, using toxic materials and um, super expensive to build and so part of our better world plan and blueprint includes seven different housing models so the first of those is the earth bag village um, model and this last week we completed research on the communal bathrooms and showers earth bag village will be the cheapest most affordable housing method that we're starting with and um, we might find a more affordable way after the earth bag village but this is the one that we think is most affordable to begin with and we've completed our, uh, finally completed our research. It's been weeks and weeks and weeks of amazing research to design the eco showers and to design the eco bathrooms, including vermiculture toilet um, details. And so all that is now done and ready to go up on the website. So I'm crossing my fingers that we'll get that up this week. And then also we finished uh, hours and hours of research on plastic what kind of plastics are going to be best for hoop houses, also what kind of plastics are going to be best for the tropical atrium covering, what kind of plastic is going to be, or is plastic even the best thing 
to uh, use. And so we finished our plastic research as well. Talk about that a little bit more in details. And um, next week we should have floor plans for you for uh, real detailed, beautiful floor plans or first generation floor plans for the Earthbag Village. Um, and also in addition to that, we finished, uh, we created a 3D collaborative space or rather finished a 3D collaborative space on Facebook. So if you're interested in joining our 3D collaborative space, an open source 3D collaborative space where it's really just about 3D work that's being done and, um, and sharing the images and collaborating and talking about using SketchUp, which is a free program, that space is now up. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we come around. So we finished uh, integration of the Satellite Pioneer details. I'll talk about that a little bit more. We have the Sego Pool update coming. I'll talk about that in detail. So we've got some more updates to the all-natural Sego Center, uh, duplicable city hub, eco pool, well, eco hot tub, and all-natural swimming pool. And we've um, finished, well, we finished the windows on the living dome of the Sego Center, and we've got a whole bunch more kitchen updates done. So I'll talk about that. Uh, a little bit more in detail. We've got our, for the Education for Life program, we've got our core curriculum page up, which is the core curriculum for the Education for Life program to make sure that we meet state and national standards and far exceed traditional educational models. And so this was modeled on California Department of Education, the ACT, SAT preparation guidelines, as well as the uh, Spectrum Test Prep book series. And so that Spectrum Test Prep book series is one of the number one teacher voted uh, preparatory series of books for uh, students. And um, it's won a couple of awards. And so we're using that to double check our work and make sure that the education program uh, opens as many doors as possible for our students. And so got that done as well. And then now we're starting on the lesson plan creation. And so this last week, we spent a lot of time researching uh, the strategies that we're going to use. And I'll talk in detail about that as well when I loop back around. So we've started the lesson plan creation behind the scenes. We're going to create the first six months to a year of lesson plans and plans of the property, which we will open source, of course, like everything else. And, um, and we think this is a big part of Blueprint for a Better World as well. It's free education, uh, easily accessible education for all for the entire planet, and um, an educational collaborative and open source model where global input can be taken and evolve the model to create the best of the best. And we've studied all the different systems out there to create our education program to just to begin with. We started with Waldorf, Montessori, Regio, Orf, uh, Aid Intelligences, Bloom's Taxonomy, Study Tech, and I think there's one other one that I'm probably forgetting. So uh, exciting to be creating the lesson plans. Once the lesson plans are done, then we'll move into ultimate classroom design, and that will pretty much do it. Oh, and we completed a whole ton of home schooling research as part of this as well. So to come up with the guidelines that led us to the California Department of Education was doing homeschool research and what's necessary to operate a homeschool to meet state guidelines. And then we ended up modeling California state guidelines because they're some of the most strict and comprehensive in the world. So um, we use that as our foundation to create our core curriculum to make sure that our education program that we're creating is uh, outstanding. So that's it. And there's been some movement on possible funding too. You know, we're still looking for a funder. Um, really, our, you know, our, ultimately we're looking for one funder to fund one community to either invest in one community or to donate to our nonprofit organization. We've got some cool movement and things happening there. Um, and so I'll talk about that as I loop around too. So yeah, it's been a busy, busy week. Um, Blueprint for a Better World. That's what we're creating, and it consists of food, housing, energy, education, highest good for-profit and non-profit business models, earth stewardship, regenerative living that gives more than it takes from the planet to surrounding communities, as well as social architecture, fulfilled living elements, um, governmental systems also, and resource-based economy implementation. All of these things are part of our blueprint for a better world. And we have put, I have put 15 years of research and study and uh, design work into this project. Now we're going on more than 15, I think it's more like 18 years now. And for the last three years, it's been a full-time endeavor for myself and a team that has grown to over 50 different uh, consultants and partners, as well as our core team. Uh, we'll be moving on to the property, the pioneer team as well, that are working on this project consistently and so it's a huge endeavor 
and that's why we're getting so much done because we've got an amazing team. We're always looking for new team members, and so let me talk about a little bit more in depth about what's happening behind the scenes on all this cool stuff that we're getting done. So starting at the top, um, Wallopini 3 is done. So Wallop the Wallopini structures are in-ground growing structures. We've designed these structures. There's six Wallopini and Aquapini structures that, are, that have been designed. Um, the first the, the first one to be built will be the large-scale aquapini, and so you can see everything that's going to be planted in large-scale aquapini on our website, as well as cultural considerations, planting guidelines, a plant description, a Wikipedia link to more information on there, a picture of what the plant looks like, a plant map for how the whole thing is laid out. We're setting it up, and then we've added this last week, in addition to finishing wallopini 3, we've added now for everything in all the wallopini structures, we have added in the uh, cost analysis and purchasing details. So there's URLs to link to where you can buy all these plants. And we're not just growing basic plants. In designing this, our botanists, our horticulturists looked at this and they said, how can we create the most nutritious the mo and the most diverse and amazing food we can imagine? How can we do that? And the Wallopini and the Aquapini structures allow us to create different internal environments that can be duplicated anywhere in the world and then can grow a diversity and variety and quality of food that far surpasses what you can get in the grocery store. And if you want to see those details, go to the website, go to the Highest Good, of, highest good Food page and take a look at what it is that we'll be growing. The amount of time and energy we're taking, hundreds of hours, have gone into plant selection and research and creating these internal environments that will produce this amazing food because we want to sell the public on this idea that it could be better. You know, our blueprint for a new world, the idea is to live regeneratively, individually regeneratively, community regeneration, planet and property regeneration, improving biodiversity, supporting high quality food and teaching other people, getting other people excited about this and making it simple. And so if you go to our website and you see those open source pages and the immense amount of work that, that we're putting into that, those are now ready for accessioning. And so the point of accessioning is part of our open source uh, botanical garden model where everything that we grow on the property will be accessioned. And what that means is where did it come from, um, all the details about the plant, and then taking detailed notes on uh, like where did it come from, when was it planted, um, what species is it exactly, you know, using all the Latin names, and so that's why we're setting up the infrastructure the way that we are, and then how does it perform within our environment, how does it perform within other environments, and so we want to take this concept of stewardship at this higher level, significantly higher level than it's being done right now, except by just the elite people that really know what's going on with the plant world. We want to simplify this process and teach people why it's a good idea for you why it's a good idea for any community or organization that really wants to embrace the idea of stewardship, that really wants to understand their food, grow high quality food, and then share that information as part of a global collaborative so that other people can grow high quality food as well and start strengthening our food supply in ways that will last. So that's why we put so much research into these plants, choosing the right diversity of plants because we really want to demonstrate what's possible and then doing all the research to find a lot of these plants, many of which are already endangered um, or rare plants and uh, are only being grown in a few places around the world, but they have these amazing nutritional benefits, amazing medicinal uses, etc. And so since we're building a whole cityscape, the idea is to build a complete sustainable village and city, the food infrastructure and having this diversity and then having access to this plant material so we can test it within our research and development environment propagate it and see them and use the benefits within the environment and continue to increase the volume of food that's being produced, which is over 20,000 pounds for the initial food infrastructure, not counting the aquaculture, just the plant materials, over 20,000 pounds of diverse and interesting plants being grown in those six structures. It's, um, it's pretty amazing. And so to complete Wallopini 3, we've now completed Wallopini 1, 2, and 3, and large-scale Aquapini. We've only got two more houses to get all the plants done. Um, they're done behind the scenes. You can click to the Google Docs and see all the unedited work if you want. And then we start moving when you go to that web page, and then we're starting to move all those pay over. And so the last two that are necessary to be, or the last two that need to be finished, is Xenopini 1 and Xenopini 2. And so Xenopini 1 and 2 
are Zen aquapinis, and what those are meant to be is a maximally diverse food production. That's something that people could build in the back in their backyard. It's affordable. It can be built pretty much anywhere in the world, and it creates an environment that not only produces an amazing diversity of super healthy and super delicious foods with a wide variety of different benefits, but it is also a gorgeous environment to hang out in, a beautiful place to go and sit and have a cup of tea that's temperature controlled in the dead of winter when you might have, you know, zero degrees outside or sub-zero temperatures outside and still have this warm environment inside that you can go in, which is like your own little botanical garden. I want to show people that they could build this kind of stuff in their backyard and produ produce enough supplementary food to provide for their entire neighborhood, you know, foods that you can't buy in the grocery store. And so uh, this is, and that's the way the wallapini structures are as well. If you don't want to incorporate aquaponics, then we have the wallapini structures, which are going to be more affordable, much simpler. Um, and so all the structures that we're designing are designed to be duplicated. And then more important, or equally as important to the duplication, is that they have a real marketable value to them. They provide specific value for individuals that just may want a great place to hang out, you know, a beautiful place to, to spend time and as well as the food diversity, or maybe it's for people that are looking for real food security that are interested in just having a secure food supply, or maybe it's people that are interested in diversity, or maybe it's people that are interested in quality, or maybe it's people that just want to have a greenhouse, but they don't want one that's a big behemoth in their backyard. They want something that's lower and in the ground and serves more functions. Everything we're doing is multifunctional and adaptable modularly or as a complete food infrastructure for a whole city. It's super cool. So um, that's a lot of work. So if anybody would like to join us in that, we're always looking to build our team. We're putting in work on this every week, and that's what we've accomplished in the food department. In the housing department, uh, we're building seven different sustainable village models. And I'm sorry if this is redundant for people who might watch our videos on an ongoing basis. All of these are meant to be standalone videos. So I pick a theme like Blueprints for a Better World, and I talk about it and relate it to everything we're doing. So um, this, if you haven't been to our website, we're building seven different sustainable village models. And then, of course, we'll, on, in addition to that, we will um, add in sustainable homes. Like we'll demonstrate individual sustainable building methods that might not be... Um, something that we would want to build an entire village from, like Cobb is something that we want to build an entire village from, or Subterranean, there'll be a Subterranean village. You know, our first village is the Earth Bag Village, and our second village is Straw Bale Village. You know, but there's other things out there that are some pretty cool things, like tiny homes that really wouldn't work for a village model because we're permitting everything and going through that process so other people have open source permitted blueprints that they can use in their counties and communities, etc. But it makes sense to build maybe a tiny home or a few tiny homes and just demonstrate what that is on the property. So, But our main focus is building sustainable, complete community, village, and city blueprints. And so the first one of those is the Earth Bank Village. And in this last week, I said that we finished our research on a couple different things. We finished our research on the communal bathrooms and showers. And they're communal because it's supposed to be maximally affordable housing that can be built anywhere in the world and go in and build small homes that last for hundreds of years. They're super, they're earthquake, uh, practically indestructible. I mean, they're earthquake resistant, they're flood resistant, you name it. These homes, earth bag, earth bag homes are, you could drive a truck into them and they'll stand up. I mean, they're pretty much, they're, they're amazing things. And so the communal shower and bathrooms is to minimize the cost of plumbing and, um, and also to demonstrate a vermiculture bathroom that won't require a traditional septic. Now we'll have a traditional septic built into these as well. And so that was another thing that we finished the research on a couple weeks ago. We still need to add those details to the website. But the idea is to demonstrate a bathroom that could be built by the layman in pretty much any county because it meets county needs and then incorporating this vermiculture where it's gonna take that fecal matter and turn it into worm castings that's completely safe, no bacteria, you don't have to worry about viruses, and then to test that soil and prove it to the county. And then once we've done that, then it's no longer in, in the experimental stage, then it's proven, and we can start improving and, and, and getting the code to embrace these alternative methods because they're proven safe, or identifying what needs to be done to continue to prove that they're safe, all the details so that we can create a mode of waste reutilization that's better than what we're doing right now. Blueprint for a better world. 
you know, right now there's still people that are just dumping their waste into rivers. We're doing it as a species. Hum humanity right now, the United States, developed countries are still doing a lot of crazy things with our, um, with our waste that's really poisoning our rivers and, you know, destroying our land, etc. And so, um, in some places, and so we want to create an alternative for that. And especially for people that are living remotely, you know, that aren't connected into city sewer systems and things like that with processing plants, we're going to create a, a mini version of processing plant. So with that is researching how do you create uh, a, a little uh, communal shower. And you got a men's and a women's bathroom. You got to buy all the different things. You got to buy the toilet paper dispensers and the sanitary napkin dispensers. And you got to buy everything from the garbage cans and how do you heat it and what's the plumbing look like, what the toilets look like, what are the barriers between the stalls look like for something like that. It is <clears throat> it's a lot. And so we finished all of that, and then on top of it, we needed to research, hey, what's the best thing for our for the aquapines and the wallapines to cover that? Do we want to do it with glass? Do we want to do it with plastic? What's the best type of plastic? It started because we were looking at hoop houses. And so all that research has been completed in the last week as well. And the jury is in from our group, and we had two people do the research on this, well, three counting myself. 16-millimeter uh, polybicarbonate is really the way to go. It's got a, a long shelf life. It's going to last 10 years longer than that if we treat it um, with something to protect against the UV. You don't have to worry about hail or uh, or windstorms breaking it and, you know, a big rain of glass coming down on people. So that's important. <coughs> it's cheaper than glass and uh, it's lighter than glass, so there's some structural benefits to it. Bottom line is it's just great. And so we're going to put that up on the website and um, share those details. We've got now what we're looking for is a specific vendor. What's the best vendor uh, with hopefully with national distribution for so that people duplicating our blueprints can use the same vendor and use all the research that we've done and hopefully we can cut a deal with that vendor to be the provider because they will reduce the consumer cost. That they'll beat consumer prices everywhere else because we're going to do all the advertising and send them all this business and then be able to offer some level of wholesale or distributor pricing to the consumer. And so that's the next step on the Earth Bank Village. Plastic research is finding that vendor and then um, you know we'll always be on the search for, for better and better suppliers and looking at uh, some of the new technology that's coming out as well because that was a big part of our research too. So um, and then I mentioned that we also created the Facebook 3D uh, collaborative space. And so what that is, if you want to be a part of that, um, send a message through our Facebook page, or you can find me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash uh, J-A-E dash S-A-B-O-L, or you can go to our Facebook um, page, facebook.com forward slash one community fans or one community updates, and send a message through there, and I can connect you in, give you an invite to our 3D group, because we're, we're about to start a big push to increase the number of people working with our project with 3D graphics using SketchUp, which is a free program, so it's available to everybody and uh, super detailed, has an amazing amount of functions. We've been doing all our 3D work on the Sego Center, on the Earthbag Village, on uh, the Tropical Atrium, on the large scale Aquapini, and all of our food infrastructure. All this stuff we're doing it in, in SketchUp because uh, anybody can use it. And so we're about to do a huge push for engineers as well as 3D artists because we'd like to build a much bigger team to help us with these blueprints that we're creating and to make them even more detailed, get as many eyes on it and as many people uh, working with these open source creations so that we can put the wraps on them, finish them up, and then we'll create an online download archive where people can download these and then start modifying them for their own use. So once we complete the models and they're totally done, and ready to go. We'll create videos showing how they were created, the evolution of the Earthbag Village because it looks cool, and then uh, put that out as open source content so people don't have to do the thousands of hours of work that we've done. I mean, just hundreds and hundreds into the 3D aspects, you know, hundreds and hundreds into the design aspects and the research and development aspects, all this stuff. It's immense, and we want to provide that for free to people so that they have a foundation, a solid building block foundation to expand it in hundred different directions and to make it even better and start building this sustainable highest good for all housing and infrastructure um, all over the world and so that's a big part of our blueprint is the open source nature of it and so if you want to join our Facebook 3D collaborative space um, setting that up has been a process of creating images so that we post 
as we're doing updates on all of our different infrastructure, we post it under the same image so you can click on the image and you can just scroll down and you can see the ongoing posts and discussions from the very beginning around that. They'll go on forever. And so Facebook's a really cool tool for storing those images because you can see them all and for posting them in that environment because you click on them and see what's going on and um, get all those details and see it in, in a chronological order and keep track of it all on Facebook to scroll through it. And so all that's been set up. Um, and then along with in the infrastructure department, you know, we've got a whole bunch of Sago Center duplicable city hub updates. So we met with the team, um, Meg West and Jennifer Inglemeyer and Rob Jurdy and uh, Michael, our botanist. We all met together for, uh, to talk about the pool, what kind of plants are going to be grown in that natural swimming pool, um, what, how big the regeneration zone is going to be. We did some little tweaks on that. It's going to have like a beach entry. Yes, it is. You know, are we going to do water collection into that area for all the Sago Center? All the Sago Center water is going to go into that area. Yes, we are. Can we do it without any chemicals? Yes, we can. What's that look like? Ozone and UV. How do we do that to make sure that if there's, you know, birds landing in that and, you know, uh, uh, ducks or something pooping in that water that we know that that water, once it leaves the regeneration zone, is going to test as completely pure and clean and sterile when it enters into the swimming zone and how big is that swimming zone, how deep does that swimming zone need to be, how does that indoor-outdoor swimming pool where you can swim from the central area into the Sago Center, what does that area look like and then what's, how, is it, how do we make it maximally safe and then how do we make it so that we don't have to worry about humidity um, problems and mold problems because of that in, in the uh, social dome because it attaches in there. All those details were talked about in this last week and so um, now we're ready and Rob is pretty much the next step on that, taking that forward and then our botanist will put in the plants and do those details and hopefully this week we'll get that into 3D. So into our 3D SketchUp renderings, which is the other big thing. we got Carl Harris who's doing amazing work on the kitchen and designing out the whole kitchen and we've got a whole bunch of those details for the, in the 3D now and I'll include some screenshots of some of the progress on that. And then we've got Jin working on, who's one of the pioneers, working on the Sago Center windows and the living dome and uh, all the windows now are done on the living dome which is it's ridiculously challenging because in a geodesic dome every plane is a different angle so working with that in 3D is really really challenging but it's also showing us you know what's going to look like when we build these dormer windows in there they have to be 44 inches off the ground to meet fire code and they have to be a certain size and they've got to fit within these triangles that are different shapes depending on where you are in a geodesic dome and then you got to put that in and you got to line it up directly with the main main face of it and then push it into the right area and then you look at the inside and see what that looks like it's a i mean it's just hours and hours and hours of work just creating the window and then getting it into the right place and so we got all those windows done in this last week and so bring out the fire trucks and celebrate <laughs> because it's, uh, now it's finally done. And so um, I'll include some pictures of that in the written blog as well. And so now we're looking at other doors. We've got to put in sliding glass doors in the dining dome for uh, and back access for being able to bring in large production food for canning and large production food production and then exit and taking food out of that structure. Um, we're going to start working on staircases inside uh, that structure, putting out the railings on that structure, all stuff in 3D. Lots and lots of work that's happening now this week, and we're just still putting the final tweaks on those windows, but they're all in place, and you, you can see a picture of that on the blog. It's super cool. So, um, and then the Education for Life program. So, Education for Life program, last week I reported that we finished our strategies of being page, which is these strategies for amazing teachers, communicators, and leaders, which is the foundation for interaction between all community members as well as the education program, based on some of the uh, most amazing writings about consciousness out there, as well as all the education programs that are available. We studied, as I said, Waldorf, Regio, Bloom's Taxonomy, Eight, in uh, eight Intelligences, which is now Nine Intelligences, uh, Study Tech, Orf, Regio. All of these were studied, and we looked at what their methodologies were what were the tools that they taught and used. And then we also looked at Eckhart Tolle's A New Earth. We looked at um, uh, Neil Donald Walsh's books, Conversations with God. We looked at, well, these are some of the foundations, Tony Robbins' teachings about motivation, which are pretty amazing. I've gone through a ton of his stuff myself. Um, and then uh, also uh, Miguel Ruiz's Four Agreements. And we put this all together in a format where people can you know, take what they want and use it and not use what they don't want. But we created a template and a great overview. That was last week. 
this week, this last, or the week before, we reported on that. This last week, um, we finished up all the research on home schools and what's necessary, and then that led us down the path to, to clarifying what the state and what the, um, what the state, sorry, what the state needs and uh, what federal government needs or what are, what, are, what are national guidelines for education programs. And our curriculum is all done. The curriculum for life is done, which was to hundreds of hours of work. And so we want to make sure that that curriculum meets and exceeds state uh, requirements. And so we chose California Department of Education because it's one of the most comprehensive and strict. And then we built on top of that, we looked at and researched SAT, ACT prep guidelines and looking at homeschool models. And we put all that together along with the Spectrum Test Prep uh, book series as a uh, backup to make sure that what is what are the test what is some of the best test prep book series that are out there right now what are they saying students need to be prepared with in for each of these different grades and so putting all that together we've created our core curriculum so if you go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash core curriculum core dash curriculum and I haven't even shared this yet uh, on our updates page or anywhere else but I will today or tomorrow um, you can see what that core curriculum looks like and so now what we're doing is we're cross-referencing that core curriculum with the existing curriculum that we've designed, which covers everything as well as things like how do you teach integrity? How do you teach, what, how do you teach lesson plans about understanding what love is? How do you teach uh, lesson plans about understanding the interconnectedness of people or diversity, cultural diversity? What does that look like and studying all that? And so we're cross-referencing all the research that we did for homeschools and state Department of Education guidelines, ACT, SAT, and we're going back through the entire curriculum, all the pages of the curriculum, all 12 pages of curriculum, and we're putting asterisks by the ones that meet that, and then we're starting to build the lesson plans, so lesson plans for life. And the way that we're doing that is by creating mind maps where we have weekly themes that then cover all of the key subjects that the state requires, so math, science, social studies, taught within the context of that theme, taught within the context of that theme, and then, so for instance, if the theme was health, actually health is one of the primary branches, if the theme was the human body, we would talk about the human body and we would, we would use that within the context of math, science, English, literature, and we would talk about how all those things relate, and we're building individual lesson plans to teach that. And the idea is to demonstrate a multi-age classroom that is tailored to the individual student as opposed to everybody sitting down and reading out of a book, the idea is we're creating a format that literally is kind of amorphous and can, can move and be flexible with the student's needs and also meets guidelines. So we know what the guidelines are and what we're shooting for, but instead of saying, hey, everybody fits into this box, we're creating a system that's maximally flexible based on Waldorf and Regio and all the systems that we studied as well as a bunch of our own research and ideas put into it. We're creating this as a template, as an open source template that will be able to be applied in a homeschooling environment, in a traditional schooling environment, in a community schooling environment, and we're open sourcing all that. And so that's what we're now working on as the education team of One Community. We're talking about what those mind maps look like, and we're starting to brainstorm and mind map out some examples of that, and um, hopefully we'll be able to put some of those up within the next couple of weeks. It's a lot of work. Um, but it's really cool because now we've got the curriculum, we've got the guidelines of what's necessary. We know exactly what it is that we want to accomplish, like what it is that we're shooting for as far as that amazing ACT, SAT scores for people that want to follow a traditional path or entering directly into the workforce with a skill set that allows you to go into higher level for workforce entry for internships, that kind of stuff, um, or getting advanced placement in college. Um, college credit before you go to college that and scholarships that kind of stuff so now that we've got all that clearly identified and all that's up on the website the next step with the education for life program is creating lesson plans and so that's what we're doing right now and um, the reason why we're doing why are we doing that well blueprint for a better world right our goal is to create a blueprint for that includes everything not just food housing and energy those things are, are pretty basic and I think that the information is really available in some form out there for how to do that. Uh, but to our knowledge, we're the only organization in the world right now that's looking at it as a complete comprehensive model and specifically open sourcing 
all of the different com components for duplication, which is really the bulk of the work, is teaching other people how to duplicate everything that we're doing. And so that's why we're doing all this stuff, why we're creating an education program, why we're putting so much detail into it instead of just going, well, we can set up a community model and then just run one of these online homeschool programs or something like that. Uh, we don't believe that that is good enough. And so um, we're doing something about it. And we're creating an open source education program and we're defining it the way that we are. This idea of the mind maps and the way that it is, is, is um, being structured is for maximum flexibility. The idea is that it can be used in any environment with any type of curriculum. If you don't like our curriculum, you can use a different type of curriculum. And then more importantly, it's a, it's a visual representation, a template that people will be able to look at and see exactly what we're thinking. And then the global collaborative can add their ideas into it. And the web pages for all these lesson plans can then grow with infinite ideas. And the goal is to intermesh all the different subjects so that there's a huge why to the learning process. So why is science important to me? Instead of just learning from a book about biology, let's look at how biology works in our life and let's use it, let's, let's put it to pragmatic and um, interesting uses within our life, within the context of a theme, and then using all that information so that the education process becomes a heck of a lot more interesting and, um, and uh, effective. So... That's why we're designing the lesson plans the way that we are. We want to be able to create a tool that people can use in any environment and then, and then be able to contribute to as well. Uh, send us their ideas and you'll see if you go to any of the education uh, components, you'll see that there's links in there for suggestions for this page, how to add your ideas. And so people can submit their ideas and we can review those and keep adding to it to make it better and better and better. Eventually, we'd like to design software. Um, or something, do something like Wikipedia where it'll be a little bit more open source, I'm not sure, you know, where people will be able to contribute more easily in a collaborative space. We have Google Docs right now, so we're also thinking about that kind of stuff too. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's been a busy week. And uh, I said that we had some movement on funding as well, so we've got several conversations that are happening behind the scenes that, you know, could pan out in a few months. Um, we still are looking for that one funder, so if anybody would like to help us, the number one thing that people can do to help us right now, two things, join our team, get involved in open source blueprint creation, become a part of creating this blueprint for a better world, and number two, share what it is that we're doing. Share it with people you know that would be interested in this. Uh, if we could get funded, that would allow us to take the property off the market that we have been working on now for uh, almost three years, going on three years now that we've been working on the details around this property, we've established a relationship with the county, uh, is perfect for sharing our model, for inviting the world to come in and visit. It's got the space that we need, it's got the water that we need, it's got the climate that we need. It has everything that we need to bring together a team that will eventually grow to three, four, five hundred full-time nonprofit volunteers working to evolve the blueprint people specifically interested in contributing something and giving back to the world. Right now we've got a team of 50, we've got a team of uh, then our core team of pioneers that will be the people moving onto the property and our whole goal is to develop all of these open source blueprints and to continue moving forward in the things that we've been working on for years now and start creating video tutorials and take our whole production model of open source content that you can see already is vast on the website, take it to the next level to take the open source uh, botanical garden model and the accessioning process, for instance, and start adding in videos of how to plant these plants and how to take care of them, time-lapse videos of everything being built, time-lapse videos of how, how uh, watching the whole property evolve with the food forest, for instance, all the different structures coming up, detailed tools, tutorials, resources, blueprints, um, and instruction manuals for how to duplicate everything that we're doing, and then even the fine-tuning process as well. And so our goal is to create a clear path, a clear blueprint that is duplicable, and then to evolve that with the global community. You know, everything from resource-based economy implementation to food infrastructure to building your own home to running your own education program to social architecture, holistic health and living models, all this stuff put together. But we're bringing together the team that doesn't just want to do it for ourselves, but it's a purpose to share it and to make it duplicable. That's the blueprint for a better world, and then to work with the global community and constantly evolving it. So 
still looking for huge funding. You know, we really would like to get that property off the market as either an investment or as um, as a donation to our 501c3 nonprofit organization. Get that property off the market. We have some great movement, but we still haven't found that funding. And so uh, we continue to do what we do, demonstrate that we are definitely the real deal and we're creating something really amazing uh, and uh, anybody can participate that would like to. So with that, nice long blog because we accomplished a whole bunch of stuff. I love talking about all the things that we're getting done right now. It's last week has been hugely productive and this week's probably going to be hugely productive too. So as always, thank you for following our progress. Thank you for uh, watching what it is that we're up to. And uh, until next week, have a fantastic day, night, week, whatever it is for you right now. And as always, thanks for following our progress on Twitter, on Facebook, subscribing to our YouTube channel if you like these updates, want to be a part of World Change, and uh, all the great letters that we get. If anybody would like to join our team, uh, go to our website and click on the Get Involved uh, drop down and helping. And uh, we'd love to have you join our team as well. So with that, thank you very much. Until next week, have a good one, and uh, we appreciate you.